Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get it. Welcome in. Yo, I appreciate y'all. Thanks for tuning into the stream. Thanks for tuning into the series. I'm Kimbro Plays. Welcome back. Another Marshall Season 6 live stream episode. Regular season finale today. We've got some scrubs in the building. I think we're taking on a, a really bad Louisville team, but it is going to be a great opportunity for us to uh, win in advance, as they say, and end up gearing up for the first postseason that includes a 12-team playoff. So pretty crazy, and hopefully our goal today is get through this particular game with no injuries. Don't get hurt is, is rule number one today. So uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for checking in on the uh, on the content. I am looking forward to it. Not going to take too, too long getting everything ready to go. So let's, uh, let's dive right in, shall we? Week 14 is here. We've got Louisville today. Two and nine on the season. We'll take a look at them first and foremost. C minus team overall. Marshall B plus overall B plus offense B on defense. Um, this Louisville squad, not great. 92nd in points per game, 100th in pass offense in the 120s in total defense. Oh man, um, giving up 248 yards per game passing. So we should be able to dice these guys up real good and uh, hopefully get the starters out of the game quick. So, that's what's on deck. That sets the tone. Let's take a look at what happened last week, right? A couple storylines. The Gators remain unbeaten as they knock off Missouri. The Ducks improved to 6-4 and four as they got a nice win against a ranked Washington. What's going on, Kenguin? Welcome in to the chat. Wisconsin remains unbeaten with that 36-35 win over Nebraska. Remember, they were able to score with under a minute to go to have a 14 or a 12 point unanswered fourth quarter to get a huge win on the road against Nebraska who was ranked inside the top 10 and they win under under a minute to go in the game they get a dub that's insane that's a heck of a heck of a heck of a game heck of a result and uh Wisconsin moves to 11 and 0 it says they're number 1 in the country there but um, I think the CFP polls has us number one, which is really that shows the AP top 25 and we're we're the CFP. So um, the Yellow Jackets get upset by a now ranked Virginia Tech team, which is pretty wild. So Georgia Tech is out of the picture. Shutout shootout in the horseshoe. Illinois gets my boys Ryan Day six and five on the year four and four in the Big Ten. I said this at the end of season five. Gotta imagine the Buckeyes are gonna move on from Ryan Day. No dice so far, but how how things may must be burning in Columbus. <laughs> I can tell you it would be not going well if that was real life. Oh, oh my God, I can't even imagine. I'd be a, I'd be terrified. Okay, let's look at the rest of the CFP rankings. Actually, I stand corrected. I didn't check this. We have been unseated for the top spot in the CFP by Wisconsin. Uh, Marshall slides down to number two. Wisconsin, after their huge win, jumps into the top spot. Now three teams are undefeated. Got Florida in there sliding down to number three. Pitt, North Carolina, Illinois, Cal, TCU, NC State, Kansas State, Nebraska, and Penn State make your top 12. So that would be the college football playoff if the season ended right now. I think the top two seeds get a bye, if I'm not mistaken. I'm a little rusty on my uh, college football playoff bracket. I don't know if it's the top two or the top four seeds. So I'm not sure if we would have a first round game or if we would have a bye. Um, but nevertheless, that would be what the top 12 looks like. And then, of course, moving in kind of in that last couple spots, Army, Alabama are the first two out. So pretty crazy. That's what we're looking like. My boy Frank in the chat. What's going on, y'all? Appreciate you, my boy. Happy Sunday. And uh, okay, let's keep it going. So that was a look at the top, the rankings. Let's look at the conference standings because that's what we have on deck next week. We still have an ACC title game to play. So we've already clinched the ACC Atlantic, obviously undefeated. Next best team, Florida State at 6-3. and three. 
So that is shored up on our side. And then on the other side of the bracket, it's going to come down to this week of the season. You're going to have North Carolina taking on Pitt. Both teams are inside the top five. Both are seven and one in the conference. I think North Carolina with the six and zero division record would have the lead as long as they don't lose. If both teams win. I think North Carolina is going to be the one to go and face us in the title game. Um, so yeah, so next week's going to be a banger. Either way, man, we've got a shitty Louisville team today, but next week you're going to be facing off against either of these two, and that's going to be fun. So definitely be sure to like and subscribe if you're uh, if you're fired up for next week. You don't want to miss that when the live notification happens, all right? Okay, let's take a look. Here's our Heisman standings. Week 14, Casey Smith, the top guy after a blowout win against wake last week uh he didn't have to do very much work only 109 yards on the ground two touchdowns we kept him in a little longer to make sure we got over 100 yards um he is sitting at 1400 on the year 19 touchdowns longest run is 71 he's been balling averaging eight yards per carry and then of course adding another 300 through the air in checkdowns and stuff so he has been a dynamic weapon for us and then here is his stats 94 speed 97 excel 95 agility casey smith the redshirt junior six foot 188 has been awesome and andrew adams's heisman campaign continues to tumble um not really through his fault we've had some blowout games the passing offense has been a little shaky undoubtedly the last few weeks uh but adams it's just not putting up the, the numbers, to be honest. We're still winning games, but um, he's he still had a great season. I'm not mad about Adams at all. Up to an 85 overall as a redshirt freshman. He's going to be a stud. At least we get to have him at least one more year. So very, very cool. I'm looking forward to it. Let's take a look at job security, and let's take a look at Louisville. That is Mike Gundy. I'm a man. I'm 40 in charge down at Louisville 74 on his job security B minus prestige Mike Gundy's had uh let's see see in his first year he's in his first season at Louisville two and nine they just hired him first year of a five-year contract and I mean the program has just been woeful haven't been over the four win mark won't get over it this year uh it's been some some time so that's that's pretty sad and disappointing to to see but Mike Gundy is a good coach so maybe he turns it around there but so far it's not looking good of course for us coach mayo in season six 77 and five career record 26 and two against the top 25 seven and one bowl record and i don't know what our win streak is up to it's up to 40 51 games 41 games i don't know it actually could go back because the 2015 season we might have had uh, a few wins rattled off at the end of that. But we're we're flirting around 40 or 45 wins in a row, um, which is insane. Playing on Heisman difficulty. Um, so, yeah, we've been we've been making it happen. A-plus prestige, best coach in college football. Back-to-back -back national title winners. So you can see the CFP logo right there. Looking to get three straight and complete the uh, the trilogy. That's the uh, that's the goal for this season. That's the story we're trying to to write and to tell. So I want to quickly look at their roster one time before we dive into this game. Um, here's our group led by Tommy Chambers, Kenneth Daniels, David Watkins, best three players on the roster. Thundercast in the building. What's up, homies? Yo, always good to see y'all. Appreciate you stopping in. Um, happy Sunday to you. Thanks for uh, checking out the episode. We are vibing cooking we're gonna get this game going here just shortly i wanted to take a look at what louisville was gonna throw at us remember two and nine on the season so not very good randy smith at 80 overall is their best player their second best best player is a fullback which uh tells you probably all you need to know their fourth best player is their punter their best player is their quarterback at 79 overall and he is injured i'm gonna have to check the injury chart to see how serious it is but um 79 overall quarterback not playing, which means I think 68 overall Zach Palmer has to play for them. Oh my God, this this uh, secondary is going to be feasting. Let's take a look at the Louisville injury report. Nobody for Marshall. 
And let's scroll down here real quick. Oh, yeah. Yikes. No wonder they've been so bad. The redshirt senior, probably team captain, out for the season with a torn rotator cuff. Uh, I'm assuming they're starting right tackle out for two weeks as well with a strained Achilles. And they've got a running back who I'm sure was in the mix for their roster out with a foot fracture. So not only is Louisville bad, they are injured. And uh, goal today, find a way to stay healthy and get on to next week. Okay, very straightforward. Quick recruiting recap. I don't know if we've got anybody on a visit today. I don't believe we do. We have five scholarships left and we've got six guys we're targeting. I'd call it like five and a half. I'm not really I'm not really freaked out if we don't add a punter in the class. But Jerome Young, the number one outside linebacker in the country, we are in a heavy race with Pitt and UNC for him. Jay Will, the corner, three-way tie, two other really good schools coming down between Marshall and Ohio State for Benjamin Pope, the number five tackle in the country. Kevin Gilliam has us in the lead over USC. Terrence Tyree. It's us in NC State, and then we're just getting started on Burrell, the punter. So kind of stressful. I'd like to be in a better spot before. I'd like to clinch a couple of these, like, for instance, the Kevin Gilliam um, and the Benjamin Pope. If we can get two commits this week so we don't have to go into the offseason in a you know bidding war for some of these guys, uh, I would feel great. So I don't know. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that, but that would be epic if we could. So, all right, without further ado, let's dive in. I hope wherever you are, you're doing well. I appreciate you checking out the content, checking out the stream. You guys are homies. I don't think we ever did. I don't think we ever ended up doing the night game. So this is senior day. I guess we're going to rock the 75 helmets. I'm not sure what date it is. I might have overlooked what date on the calendar um you know the the commemorative 75 game is each year so that's that's on me if that's what happened but at the very least we can uh we can kind of make up for it here today i don't mind their white jerseys they have yeah that's fine red on red is is good i don't mind that at all okay that's what louisville can rock Fingers crossed, everybody, that we don't have any issues with my game crashing this week. Obviously, we had an issue last week. Um, had to play five quarters <laughs> instead of four. So hopefully that's not a problem this week. And uh, yeah, man, I appreciate you guys just showing love and uh, checking out the stream, man. Means a lot. Means a lot. Top players, Watkins, Daniels, Chambers for us. Hutchinson, Smith, and Griffin for them. Yikes, as we looked at the... Uh, the injury report no visitors no no uh, recruits in town this week just kind of make it happen and get up out of there the joan senior day all black unis commemorative 75 helmets on the side and uh this is a fun way to wrap up the season six regular season i'm feeling good about it i'm feeling good about it Four teams inside the top 25 on our side of the ACC, which is pretty impressive. Still shocking that Syracuse ended up dropping a couple games. NC State's looked good. Florida State's looked good. Um, it's weird because we're undefeated, but I felt like there were some decent teams that we faced on our side of the bracket. So, uh, yeah, pretty crazy. But uh, here's the final sequence. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm not sure how much of NCAA 14 is going to happen. Um, so this might be our final game in the Joan in this dynasty, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, I'm not sure. I think maybe, I don't know. Do you host a home playoff game in the playoff thing? Like in the 12 team playoff? I don't know if you do in the early rounds, but if not, and college football EA 25 comes out and we don't end up using Marshall, um, this is uh, going to be a, a pretty crazy situation to have this be the final game there. Hopefully nobody gets injured and we can uh, coast through. Going to miss the Joan, though, man. It's been a special a special place to play college football. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. And uh, we are underway in week 14. Let's make it happen. Casey Smith. Fielding it a step inside his own end zone. We're going to bust this outside. See if we can break a few tackles. Casey Smith with a nice return out across the 31. 
Coach Mayo likes what he sees, of course. Good stuff by the boys. I'll uh, I'll turn the aggressive blocks on. I want to strip the ball, even if uh, even if we miss some tackles today. I'd like to get some turnovers, man. Can we get a few turnovers going? That would be nice, huh? That would be nice. All right, here we go. First and ten from the thirty. Little zone read here on first down. Little buck options. We're gonna get outside. Oh my God, Casey Smith. With the wheels, can he get the edge? Ooh. Gets tracked down from behind. They do a good job wrangling him, but 35 yards rumbling. Just a couple jukes on the on the sideline. He's just he's too tough, man. He's just too tough, and you know, Louisville not not exactly the toughest competition we've ever faced either. So, um, okay, I'm gonna run this ball inside here real quick. Jeff Clemens in the game breaks a tackle, falls forward, has a couple. I, uh, I want to get some throws going. I want to try to establish a rhythm in the passing game today. That's a big goal of mine. Uh, we've not thrown the ball well in for a lot of yards, in part because Casey Smith has been so effective. Obviously, he's been a stud, but uh, it would be nice in the final couple days of the regular season here to find some rhythm, complete some passes, you know, make some plays happen. So third and long. Incomplete on, on second. Looking for Tommy Chambers and just have to see what we can do here. Pressure look sent. There's our boy Brendan Armstrong over the middle. 26 yards. We're in a little multiple verticals concept. Middle field open with the two safeties. And Brendan Armstrong is going to find some space down inside the 10. I think he's we're probably at about the 7. Good work. Tommy Chambers playing in his last game. At home for Marshall. Kind of an un, unsung hero type. I don't think Tommy Chambers, you know, was ever an elite player for us. But uh, certainly somebody who I feel like, you know, I, 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 I appreciate it a lot. Speaking of, there's Chandler Taylor back in the end zone. Six-yard touchdown pass. Andrew Adams. A sharp two for three on the opening drive. Marshall scores. Didn't take more than a minute and change to get down the field and punch this in. A little play action down around the red zone. Lead the receiver, Chandler Taylor, in for six. He's going to be a player, man. I mean, he already is, but, like, Chandler Taylor's the kind – he's the first level of wide receiver that we started to, uh, to recruit. And before I even finish that thought, Florida State, who I was just giving their flowers, is a pretty good team. Shakes up the college football world, upsetting number three, Florida – Wow, what a result that is. Virginia Tech goes down as well to rival Virginia 24-20. And NC State sneaks away from 3-9 and nine Wake Forest. College football, the final week of the season, full of bangers. There may be some things in the ticker that we got to keep an eye on below. Obviously, this is a night game. Most of the games will have been played. But that is wild. I cannot believe it. Florida State, Dan Fitch. The Seminoles get the upset over the Gators, and that has obviously huge implications for the playoff. I think, I think Florida is probably still going to stay inside the top twelve. I would assume that they're going to make it still, nevertheless. But you don't, you don't really know. Why are there six eligible players? Four wide receivers and two fullbacks. Do they have a fullback playing offensive line? Oh, there's four offensive linemen there. How do they have so many eligibles? Oh, no, no, no. Whoever's playing right tackle is a, a fullback. There's no way, brother. There's no way, brother. <laughs> ah. This bum just lobbed it up. I'm tapping L1, I'm telling you. I'm spamming L1 with David Watkins. And the jump ball on the outside goes for, was that 30 yards? Okay. The, I, I was too shook. I was... I was too crossed up by the fact that they are starting a fullback at right tackle for the injured right tackle. Yeah, hell of a catch. And, yes, open first uh, first series cake for sure. Oh, boy, we're late. That's going to be a completion as we make a mistake in man coverage. Wow, unreal. Uh, in this series, right, Coach Mayo hoists another natty, then takes the Ohio State job. <laughs> the perfect per personal culmination for you then bring on NCAA 25 oh man that would be pretty idyllic although I will say I mean 
I don't know if I could take Coach Mayo away from Marshall at this point. Like, I know personally I would love to see the Buckeyes in the mix here, but I don't know if I could if I could take Coach Mayo with a third straight national title and and make a case that says that that situation is better than what he's got going on in Huntington. Um, just from the way we've recruited and stuff, I, it would be pretty hard for me to pull him away. But that would be cool. That would be cool. It would. And fucking Louisville. This fucking QB, 68 overall. He's doing us work. Zach Palmer. What is happening? <laughs> Yo, what is happening? This man, design quarterback draw. Great call. They get a fullback, the fake right tackle. Lead blocking. Making us look silly out here. The the, the Marshall fans are kind of like, Yo, brother, we, we had Marshall covering... The, the minus 57 or whatever the spread would have been for a game like this. What are y'all doing? I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have any, any answer. Throw that. Palmer running. Going to get brought down. Aaron Soul, the linebacker, makes the play. Tyron Hooper was in there early. Missed the tackle. Obviously, we have strip ball on. I'm, I think I'm going to switch that because we're missing, we're missing some tackles. But Aaron Soul. With a sack. He doesn't get in there a ton. He's had a great season, but um, not a ton of sacks for Soul. I'm going to turn big hits on aggressive, and I'm going to turn strip ball back to balanced. I would like to force some turnovers, but that's not the way we're going to do it. So might as well make the switch right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but they have an injury to their quarterback, so they just had to swap to quarterback three. I don't know what this dude's name is, but he's out there. And, oh, my God, he's going to score a touchdown. I thought for sure that guy was going to get there. William Perry, the junior, the freight train. William Perry from Chicago, brother. Are we talking about the fridge, not the freight train? The fridge? What? Comes out and hits the screen pass on us, gets a few yards. I got to see what's going on here. How deep are they into the hole? Because I only paid attention to the backup quarterback. So, Matt Richardson injured. Zach Palmer injured. They are down to 66 overall. Fourth year player, William Perry. That man is studying finance, brother. Like, my guy is not a football player, and here he is facing the uh, number two team in the country. It looks like looks like Palmer will be back soon. He's just got a sprained, sprained something. So, as they try to set up another screen, and we read that one all the way. Jeremy Hines, no sure, no shot. He did a good job with uh, with our boy Ryan Young getting out in front of the offensive line, trying to get out there for the screen, and we shut it down. So, uh, wow. Uh, I mean, hey, give him credit. And there's a flag. What's the flag for? A false start before I can even look. Didn't even get a chance to pay attention, and we've got a false start. So, fourth and 15 then and I don't know from how far this kick is what are they at the 23 yard line so I don't know we'll see if they can uh, if they can make this happen or not and the kicker does sneak it in so the shutout is ruined on the first possession for Louisville uh, down to quarterback three and they march it all the way down the field and, and score on us uh, mm, that sucks that sucks. Welcome in, Mike. I appreciate you, brother. Good to see you. Yeah, we we uh, we eventually shut them down. Not surprised it took us a second. I'm surprised it took it took us a second. Um, just with the the disparity in talent between these two rosters, uh, I'm kind of shook that they even scored at all. But nevertheless, here we are. I had to reset the score bug. I don't know why it does that. I, this is this is the conundrum I'm in because I I could just run the ball for every play on this drive and eventually score a touchdown. But like I said, I really want Andrew Adams to get in the mix. And okay, wait a minute. You, you out here walking safeties into the box on me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really for it, brother. So y'all sitting in pressure and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm just gonna, no. Andrew with the longest, slowest windup of his career. Brother, I hit triangle. 18 million minutes before this dude takes this sack. I got to show y'all what I saw here. Pre-snap, the safety walks over the center. Like, what are you doing, buddy? 
and uh, just take a look at Chandler Taylor. Are you kidding me? We finally get off the press, and right about here, I've hit the button because Andrew's already starting this motion. Just get it out of your hand, brother. This is this is an 80 yard touchdown pass, and you you can't get it out. <laughs> the fighting Lamars came to play. You aren't joking. That is just unfortunate. End up taking a big old sack on a touchdown ball. That is not fun. And look, loading the box again. I mean, I want to run the ball, but like, I'm very tempted to throw here. Okay, fighting Lamars. Okay, fighting Lamars. Good job, Casey. Oh, I thought he was going to break another tackle. Holy shit. All right, well, Casey's making something out of nothing. We get eight back. A little more manageable third and 12 now, but... Hmm. I think I'm going to run this comebacks. This vert comebacks feels pretty good. I'm curious what they're going to run. They are fucking ballsy. Look at the press coverage on the outsides. Okay. All right. Y'all do your thing. We're going to max protect. And let's, uh, let's see who can win on the outside. Nobody. So Andrew's got to take off. Don't catch my shoes. Don't catch my shoes. Oh, God. Okay, get out of bounds. No reason to take a hit. I would love for somebody to win against these bum-ass safeties, but look, you got people covered up all down the field. You got people running with our guys everywhere. Somebody get off the coverage, brother. Luckily, Adams escapes the pocket and picks up a first down. We convert a third and very long to not look like idiots in our own red zone, but... Brother, the press coverage on the outside, this is this is some something. These dudes, these dudes are acting like they don't give a shit about us. Okay, well, I'm gonna just launch on you then. I'm just I'm launching. We're gonna launch. And see what happens. Brother, can I get a wide receiver to do anything today? Can any of y'all, can any of y'all act like you play for a championship fucking team? Somebody, somebody get off, can we get off of press coverage? Anybody, Tommy, make a play. Somebody, somebody get some separation out here, would you? Jesus. Should have been an INT, you're right. I mean, but like, hell, could somebody make a play? Anybody? There's one. It's underthrown. Chandler makes the play, though. Chandler Taylor. I, sh I really should just only target him. He's the only he's the only guy who's any good on this roster. Big old over route on play action. Pass protection holds up. Taylor finds a little room. This ball's a good one right over the corner and in front of the safety who's trailing. And we're in business inside the 10. First and goal. Jesus. These guys, man. These guys. I guess. I guess I'm gonna. I don't. Oh, keep your feet in. You could just tell Brennan's. Brennan's momentum was gonna take him out. They ran a little like safety blitz there. That was an insane little. Uh, little red zone play call defensively, sending corners on blitzes from all over the field. I'm going to get Ross out of the way. See if you take somebody with you, and you do not. So this is zone coverage. I don't love where this run play is going, but we're going to give it a go. And we get it blocked up. Easy. We're in. Okay. Could you lay off the quarterback in the end zone, please? Could you please lay off of him? Beautiful zone read keeper. Easy. As easy as you get as he gets slammed down to the ground. But we are able to put up 14 now. And it feels a little more in control. This first quarter has felt out of control. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, here we go. I'm trying to think what else has been going on in the world of sports this weekend. So we got the finals of both the men's and women's. WrestleMania is happening two nights. The UFL, is that what it's called? UFL has started, so you got football, baseball started, basketball is almost over, 
AKA my Cavs are going to lose in the first round and embarrass themselves. Masters week. Yes, massive. Masters week. That's what we really care about out here. Especially if Tiger can go. I can't wait. Mike says the UFL is amazing. I haven't watched all but like I would I would say I've watched like a game and a half. I've seen like a portion of one game and most of another. And uh, but so far it looks good. I, I really would love to see the UFL do something official, like some sort of affiliation if we could. Good D boys. Oh man, Ryan Young flying around. Defensive line doing a great job taking their guy and making everybody else, making the linebackers specifically freed up to run around and make some plays. So good start. And we're going to run our first play of the day in nickel as they've got two fullbacks on the field, which is insane. They got a guy playing fullback at running back. I would love to see Ron Davis going up against a fullback, start to make some plays. And of course, they're not even going to throw it. They're just going to tuck it on the quarterback draw. The backup quarterback is back into the game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I should have known the quarter. The computer was going to just tuck their tails already. Fire JB Bickerstaff before game one. I would, uh, I'd be down with that. Got to imagine an assistant coach on the staff can't do worse. I mean, JB's a slug, and Eric Love got slugged. Holy. Big old hit there. So, yeah, I would be totally down for that, to be honest. UFL needs to be backed by the NFL. That would be very cool. I don't know if you could get into NFL um, stadiums. Like, I think they're using a bunch of, like, college stadiums from teams all across the country. The, I think the stadium issue is a big one because I think a lot of the big stadiums in the offseason in the NFL decide to start using – it for concerts and events and stuff so i don't know how that would exactly work out but uh it would be cool to see to see something else i'm gonna run a slow i'm gonna run a drag with matthews and see if we can hit brit yeah brit's open throw the football oh my god andrew throw the football buddy i'm hitting triangle i've hit triangle i'm, I'm like tapping it and we're stuck in the animation as we ride the quarterback veer. Throw the football, my my guy. Get the quick release, please. Please. Third and forever. Luke Walton. Yeah, that's true. Luke would be great. I would not be mad at all about Luke Walton. No pressure sent. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what a throw. What a play by Adams. I was like, oof. Can I get this away without crossing the line of scrimmage? A little questionable, but checking him out. Open up the hips. Flick it. Get it out there. Yes, sir. Nice play. Nice play. I love it. Got his head set on the conference championship game. You're right. Adams is out here going through the motions. He's not ready. I mean, my guy, I need you to get the ball out. I need you to get the ball out. Oh, what a lane. Oh, Casey Smith gets shoestring tackled. We have a little convoy going. Good momentum moving everybody. Unfortunate there. I'm actually going to go... Not hurry up. Two clock. Yeah, I want to get through the quarter and stuff. Remember, I'm not going to push the controller. I think that's the issue we had last time with the game crashing. I'm trying to speed through this little sequence and it freezes up the game if you try to get all of these replays skipped so i'm not gonna mess around all right second and seven we haven't run any like slants concepts we have no quick hitters as they've had everybody in the box all day let's see what we got here all right throw it over the ball to armstrong fall forward would you Stop spinning around all crazy. I can't believe the the eclipse is happening tomorrow. That is going to be obviously pretty crazy to see. Um, I got to figure out if I'm going to be able to if I'm going to be able to watch it or not. But if I'm able to, uh, it's going to be very cool. I'm looking forward to it. So, just hope everybody's safe, man. The traffic situation is not great. Oh Jesus! Whoop! Hmm. 
Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, sir. Adams, this was sketchy. Stepping up right there. I thought 91 was going to get us. And uh, to put a move on the linebacker here, um, my man's draws are on the floor. He didn't know what happened on that spin move. Nice little rush. Gorgeous. We're into the end zone. 21-3. Two clock enabled already early in the second. Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. That is what we're talking about. I would love to get Casey Smith some run here. I'm, I'm going to prioritize running the ball with Casey from pretty much from here on out. Like, Andrew has a couple rushing touchdowns. I wish he would have thrown it a little more, but the Heisman campaign for Smith shouldn't be extinguished just because we're playing a very bad Louisville team. That would be a shame. So, we've never... We've never had a running back be a Heisman finalist, I don't believe. I don't think Ali was ever a finalist. And we definitely have never had a running back win. So it would be very cool to have him uh, not only get to New York, but actually hoist. So I'd like to not blow that if we can. You know what I mean? Um, that's annoying, Louisville. Four wide receiver sets and you're running it on me. Like, just throw the ball. You're down three touchdowns in your final game of the season. Thank you. Thank you, Ron Davis. They've scored points, and you have yet to have a sack against a starting fullback at right tackle, buddy. Thank you, 43. Welcome to the party. I mean, hell, where you been? We've all been waiting for you, so... 0 for 2 on third down. I do not expect them to pick this one up today either. And we'll just have to see. Tyrone Hooper. Big dog. Let's see. What was his pass rush move? Just a bull rush. Nothing fancy at all. Just get up underneath Burgess, the right guard, and get to the quarterback. And Palmer, obviously, you can't hold it that long. I mean, it wasn't very long, but you can't hold it that long in a game like this. So, all right. Marshall D doing its job today. Aside from a fluky catch and a scramble on the first drive, and they're able to get three, but otherwise doing their job. Let's see if we can get Eric Love out here a little bit. Oh, my God. What the hell happened? Oh, my God. He fumbled. What is going on? <laughs> what is happening? Jesus, Eric, what was that? What the hell was that? I don't understand. Okay, hold on. I definitely don't want to take a snapshot. I'd like to use the joystick. Thank you. What was that? My boy. We field it. We stumble crazily, even though I'm hitting the spin button. And then you get into the, the animation and you get the ball stripped. Eric Love, you're supposed to be a finalist for returner of the year, and you're letting a Louisville walk-on scrub backup force the fumble on you? And a dude named Francis at that? I think I'm trying to get an angle for a thumbnail here. It would be cool to get Eric Love blowing this play, and I like the smoke. So I think that's what we're going to try to do. I need to lower this thing, zoom it in a little bit, huh? It's a little finicky. Something like that I think looks pretty cool. I'm just making sure it looks good on my little monitor here. I can kind of go back just a little bit. <laughs> Everybody's conference ready. Yeah, upset that we lost the number one seed and everybody is, is already on to the conference championship game. I think that's absolutely what's in the water today. I think that is absolutely what's in the, in the water today. I know, I'm sorry this is taking so long. I'm just trying to make sure it looks perfect. Okay, I think I got the right angle now. I think I got the right angle now. There we go. We'll go just one more. I'm taking screenshots with a, a little uh, hot key on my OBS keyboard and banging my mic. Yeah, can't get up for a 2 and 9 team. Looking insane. Playing like JV. Just silliness today. And they're going to run the ball from shotgun. Oh, nope, he didn't. There we go, Scotty. Thank you, Scott. And we have the speed. Oh, we get caught by the quarterback. Scott Ward. Man coverage against the slant route. 
undercuts it. That's more what we were expecting out of the defense today. Nice play by 14, and we are all, all is fine. Saving the day. Not that, like, we were worried at all, but, like, make make up for – pick up your boy. Make up make up a play. Make make it up. Help, help a brother out. Pick me up. These guys are not playing games, dude. Holy. The press coverage stuff today is thick, and I got nowhere to go. Luckily, Adams has the speed. No. Fuck. Again, I'm I'm looking downfield. I'm I'm hoping. And I know I'm running a lot of vertical routes, but I'm expecting our guys to get some separation, to outrun some dudes. Like these are a bunch of bums from Louisville. Like make a play, brother. Make a play, brother. Well, there's a little bit. A little curl route over the middle with Armstrong is about the only thing we can get open. Everything else, struggling, struggling. Randomly, Discord just opened on my on my monitor here. Okay, there we go. I don't know if you guys could see that. I don't think you guys saw that, but like a, a Discord, Discord on Google Chrome just like randomly opened. Blitz coming from the right side. There's Tommy in space. Got to break a tackle. He does. Senior day. Tommy Chambers, 22 yards into the end zone. And there we go. 144 yards, two touchdowns on 9 of 11 for Adams. The only two real errors. Just some, some questionable throws deep downfield. A drop and, a, and an almost INT. But great play there by Chambers. Good separation off the line of scrimmage. Break a tackle. Get into the end zone. 28 through a quarter and a half for Marshall. Second studio update of the day, and it is a good one in Miami. Four and seven, Miami. 21 all against Pitt. Pitt has to have this one if they've got any chance. North Carolina's got the tiebreaker, I believe, in terms of uh, making it to the ACC title game next week. Winner taking on the thundering herd as Sullivan has tripped over himself. There we go. Yeah, Pitt, Miami down there. 21 all. Nope, Miami is now losing 28-21 as Pitt has just scored in the second quarter. Very interesting stuff. I, do, I mean, this game, right? This game is so great. I mean, there's obviously more and more and more you could do, but it's just, it's fantastic. And that one's thrown away. Palmer air mailing it. I'm surprised that we're still not able to get anything going in terms of uh, pressure on the quarterback. Just sending four. That to me is very problematic. And I don't understand it. Uh, we just blitz. Nobody able to get home. They pick up eight. <clears throat> Looking kind of silly. D-line. I guess we do have two sacks on the day. One's from a linebacker. The other one is from a defensive tackle. Oh, no. We have three. I guess there's another one. Oh, I took the bro I took the inside guy. The speed option to the boundary for the first time in the history of NCAA 14 hits. And there's no cheerleaders. They didn't even make the trip. So there's that as well. Cameraman cuts looking for tier, cheer, for Louisville cheerleaders, and they were like, nah. Two and nine? We're not going. Give me that. Son of a bitch. I tried to get out in front of this and use their picket. I'm slamming triangle. Ryan Young, not interested in, uh, in animating, reaching up to try to get the ball. I guess I should have just hit L1 and tried to swat it. I don't know. They, good things seem to happen when Palmer's in the game for them. He must be a good luck charm or something. I don't know what's going on, but he's he's been he's been good for them. Definitely sending pressure. And they continue. Finding room in the zone. The right guard picks up the blitz on the right side. I I mean I don't know what else to do. I'm sending pressure. And that was a zone blitz. I've man blitzed. I've just sat back in coverage. Try a little bit of everything so far. None of it working. At least, like, really. 
to slow them down. The, the things that have slowed them down the most have been their own play calls. Another one over the middle. This time to Smith. He's got six. That's their best player, if I'm not mistaken. I think that that's their guy, Smith. Second and four. I mean, this is what they should have been doing. I'm not saying they would have been successful, but like at least try to throw the ball today. Oh, that ball's going to be mine. Scott. Scott looking at his hands. Already has an INT on the day. Should have had a second. And Kenneth Daniel should have got it on the bobble. My goodness. Can we get something? Squeeze the football. Now they're, they're guys at right guard. Palmer late to the sideline. I don't know what happened there. It looked like they had it. Scott Ward might have had his helmet hit it. But a fourth and four upcoming. Field goal formation. Under four minutes to go in the first half. I do not think that they're going to kick this. Really? And a flag down. <laughs> Their second penalty. Referees left the game as well, apparently. Uh, another false start while trying to set up the field goal. And now they're punting. Okay. Interesting. I might I'm going for it at this point. Like I, I don't think I'm I'm punting. I think I'm going for the for something. Just to kick it through the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, this is this is wild stuff. So that's the end of the Louisville drive. They they strung a couple first downs together. They were kind of annoying, but that's it. That's how it went down. It's gonna be interesting to see how the new college football game is gonna be. It very much is. I will say this of the new college football game. The stuff we are hearing about Herb Street and Fowler and a couple others doing a lot of the like audio, like doing the, the booth calls and stuff is very, very cool. Like just to have have Herbie and Fowler back and you know their excitement and them simulating certain situations. Like I've heard them talking about like we even have a call for if you score a 75-yard touchdown on the opening drive in the Red River shootout. Like, very specific stuff that they're at least thinking through and trying to uh, to put some audio layers down. That's very cool. I'm, I'm, I'm very much excited for that. So, going to be fun. Going to be fun to see. I hope the game is good. Chandler Taylor on the jet sweep motion. Let's see if we can get something going here with him. Spinning up field, can't get away. Nice play by the safety, 26. Flying up, flying up field. Robert Robertson has a sack. Good play in open space right there. I probably should have juked instead of trying to spin, but yeah, unfortunate. I'll try to get a few yards back here. Man, it's hard. and it, they are, they are just asking me to mess around. Oh, Casey Smith got hit. And launch the ball downfield. I mean, the way that they've set up their formation and how many people they've committed to the run is just like, you got to throw it. You got to throw it, even if that's not the right option. So perfect on third down so far today. Let's see if we can convert another. We're running it out of shotgun. But this single high safety, like pressure look stuff, man, this has been crazy. And Adams might house this one. Got some speed. A little friendly fire from Louisville. Andrew Adams, 58 yards into the end zone. And that's quite the exclamation point in what is likely the final few plays of his game today. Oh, man. Not a lot that we did on this. This is a simple zone read. We're reading the defensive end on the left side. We decide to keep here. The DB comes flying upfield. We get a nice block from Taylor. Nice sustained block from William Matthews. We cut it inside. This guy dives, takes out his teammate, and it's a foot race right there. And that's that. Frank says, with that run, I need to go. I totally get you, brother. Thanks for checking in. And uh, I, I'm sure you understand how this game is going to turn out. Happy uh, happy Eclipse Day to you tomorrow, and, and thanks for hanging out for a few. That's a tutty all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of these plays, I wanted to go to Casey Smith, but they've decided today to take Casey Smith out of the game. They've packed the box, and they are 
diving on the running back on all of these zone read keepers. A lot of times teams will force you to hand it off. Not today as Little finds a little seam. 31 yards. Let's see what they can do with 55 seconds left. I'm not sure. But uh, we will see. Man, this has been a, a, an interesting game for sure. Seven Nation Army popping. Team is fired up. Oh, Brown. Corey Brown was right there. Stephon Hutchinson, I think that's the fullback. He's able to squeeze it, but Brown was all over that ball. I thought for sure we were going to pick that one off. Unlucky. Unlucky. To the sideline, David Watkins drops his interception in a great spot in man coverage. Unlucky to not bring that one in. And it is a quick third and three for them. Speed option to the boundary. Can we get there? Beautiful form tackle from Corey Brown. I am going to take the timeout. Force them to punt this thing. See if we can... Uh, Hit one more explosive play. 300 yards of total offense in the first half. Just smoking these guys like, like I expected. But um, feel still feels good, especially after the kind of goofiness of the first quarter. But so far, so good. Good return for Love. Can he keep the speed? That certainly works. 18 yards, just shy of the 50. Final possession for Adams here. He will not get any run in the second half. And let's, uh, let's see if we can get a few more yards, maybe get in field goal range. Certainly don't want to force one, but we'll see if we can do something. There's William Matthews breaking a tackle out to the 50. Gets out of bounds. Nicely done there by 17. Absolutely. My, my boy I daughter in the building. Yes, sir. Marshall crowd getting into it. That's how we like it. Yeah, the crowd's been fantastic. The Marshall fan base has been fantastic in general like they're so proud and excited for football and just all the things so never never been a problem with them yes sir <laughs> better see the backups big tank in the building that's what we like to see tank i daughter frank yes sir well casey smith run oh gets tripped up i'm gonna take that second time out if he i was trying to get to the sideline of course um and unfortunate not to get there but all right, let's see. Second and two. I'm going to run a little verticals. <laughs> oh, man. All the accounts. We love to see it. That's how you That's how you do it. That's a real friend there. Oh, what a play by Burks. There's no way he roams over. Fumble! Matthews dives on it, and we're still alive. <laughs> this guy, there's no way he's backpedaling as fast as Matthews is running forward. I absolutely hate that about this game. Um, so we throw our first pick, but somehow we force the fumble and get the ball back, and we still have a chance to score before the end of this half. I got to watch this replay because this is so stupid. Right about here, this guy is strafing. I'm talking about this guy right here, the guy who makes the INT. He's strafing, and he's running as fast as Matthews is running full speed. And then doesn't even struggle to flip his hips and keep the same speed. He might even go a little faster. So I'm looking right here. Where are we at with Adams? I'm looking right here. I've I've just hit the button to throw. Right there. Because the ball's separated. So I've already decided to throw. You mean to tell me a ball on the hash marks is not going to be caught by 83? And we go back, and this is even more inside than the hash marks, and this guy undercuts it. How the fuck does that happen? <laughs> I hate that. Madden does some shit like that, too, by the way. Like, that stuff, that stuff makes me so mad because that's a very good play call. That's a good read. And it's the right read. It's just shit like that with this game, man. It just, it just pisses me off. All right, well, we got the ball back nine seconds to go. Uh, let's just see if we can do something. Any old thing. Run the slant with Armstrong. Let's see. Nothing open. Going to Casey Smith on the check down. He's got a few. We do get the first down. I maybe. Nah, 
I don't think so. I think the clock's gonna go before I get a chance. Oh, wait a minute. Or not. Final play of the half. It's not really worth the field goal. Might as well take a shot to the end zone. I was gonna take timeout and kick it, but like, not, not exactly what you're looking for. Ball don't lie though. No, no, no. Ball lies. Ball, the game lies. EA Sports lies specifically. EA Sports specifically. So, my boy, with all the accounts, appreciate you, Frank. Get some sleep, man. Um, 35-3, is that the score? They did give it back to us, and then we didn't score with it. So, you know, you know how that goes. Just wasn't really feeling kicking the field goal. I mean, there's a difference between 35 and 38. Adams, with his legs, has been fantastic today. Scott Ward's got a pick. We should have more interceptions as well. Had multiple chances. Tommy Chambers scores on senior day. Adams has been okay through the air. I haven't actually minded the, the passing game. He's been a little slow to release the ball, but, I mean, you can't be mad with over 300 yards of total offense. We've held them to 25 rushing yards in the first half on seven minutes of time of possession. It's been a good half. The, we, we were a little loose with it at a, at a few moments in the first half. Some fumbles, some dumb plays, but that was a dominant performance by the boys. So, okay, before we get into the third, I am going to make some subs. And I was going to do the mass subs thing, but I think I'm going to do some specific subbing. So, we're going to take Adams out, and I want to see Roy Morris. I want to see Roy Morris at quarterback. I want to see Chris Suggs in there at running back over Jeff Clemens. I know it's senior day, but still. Let's go ahead and get Ross in at quarter at wide receiver one. We'll get yeah, those guys are red shirting. So we'll get Lou Walker in at quarter at wide receiver two. And that's it. We'll keep Matthews in there. We'll get Britt in at tight end for Armstrong, and we will get Jones in. We'll swap Marcus out for Woods. We'll swap Webb for Minor. Thomas for Small. Which is this is always tricky to go through the list. I wish it would just show you like by actual depth chart. So we need Fagan. Man, we've got some depth on the offensive line, man. We really do. Yes, gonna get the a little bit of training going on the next generation. Give him a full half. We're going to go Lou, not Lou Williams. I always think Lou Williams, number 17. Leon Williams for Davis, who I think Leon Williams is going to be a stud, by the way. Johnson out. We'll put Barry in the game. I could blow the red shirt on Dodd, but that wouldn't work. Speaking of, I hope that's in the new game. I hope they let you play freshman four games before the red shirt comes off, because that would be sick. So Barry's in. We're going to go Jordan for Hooper and Simmons for Stratton. So the starting defensive tackles are out. We'll go Jackson for Sullivan. And then we'll go Sowell for Young. No, Smith, Cedric Smith. Because I don't want Aaron Sowell to play and get hurt. And I don't want Young to play and get hurt. So I need a few guys in there at linebacker. And then I think we'll go Alexander at right outside linebacker. There we go. Okay. Perfect. We'll go Montgomery at quarterback or at cornerback one because I like him a lot. And then we'll go Love and Sanders. So Ward and Watkins come out. And then we will go at free safety. I don't want to use RJ Thompson. I like him. We're going to go Paul Jenkins. And then at strong safety, it's uh it's this guy we've been playing all year who's not very good. John, John Stewart. Okay, there we go. So we're fully set. Specialists are the same. I am going to change kick returner, though, because Eric Love and Casey Smith, I don't want in there. So who should return if not those guys? I don't want any of the starters to do it either. Let's go Montgomery, and let's go Lou Walker. And then for punt returner, we'll go Suggs. Yeah, that feels better. That way nobody gets hurt. I'm not really trying to risk anybody still being in the game at all. Not interested. So 
Okay, there we go. Now we're ready for the second half. Chew clock is on. We'll kind of get through this pretty straightforward as they're breaking tackles. Holy, can somebody make a play? 26-yard return. Made us look crazy. Cedric Smith, the fifth-year senior, into the game at middle linebacker. We are ready. We are ready to go. Scott Ward and a few players are still going to play a little bit just because of the formations and the fact that it's not a true 85 scholarship roster. But Palmer on the run, and he's going to go down on the first play. Grant Jordan with the sack. He just tries to escape the pocket, and uh, Jordan with the power move gets straight, walks the right guard straight back into the quarterback, and he's right there. Nicely done. Good to see freaking pressure from the defensive line only sending four. How nice is that? My goodness. Love it. Need more of it. I fully expect a draw play and a screen play, and then a speed option. That's like pretty much all that's coming. Another sack. Is that Grant Jordan again? No, I think that was the other guy. Yeah, that's Nathan Berry, 90, 98 this time, not 96. As we go back-to-back -back sacks for D-line two, the two's out here making some plays. Gorgeous. You love to see it. And uh, third and 15 upcoming is the second team D has looked good already. As they run corners, Palmer off his back foot, dirts this one. And that's a three and out. What a start. Good work by the uh, by the twos. That's that's great. Love to see it. I think that is Chris Suggs, the true freshman running back, returning this punt. It is number 29. I don't love 29, but it's the only real number we had available for him. Breaks the first tackle and then gets grabbed. And uh, I've liked him so far. I've been a big fan of Chris Suggs. I think he could absolutely be a starter someday down the line. And, of course, Roy Morris, the true freshman in at quarterback number 16, rocking his JT Barrett jersey. Suggs, Jukes, has seven. We're going to take our time a little bit with some of the run. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep the full offense in there, though, like the, the playbook. Um, but we'll just mix it up a little bit more. Have obviously a lot more throws in there, or runs in there, I should say, not throws. Morris using his legs, tucks, slides. They've, they've played a lot of man coverage. They've played a lot of single high safety coverage, which forces your hand to some degree. And it's just been like, I want to throw it, but they're, they're sticky. There's not a lot of zones, not a lot of holes. A lot of people in the box. Finally, try to find a little room. Only get two with Morris. Try to run it again here. We've got so many zone reads in this offense for obvious reasons. We've had really talented running quarterbacks, but it's a little tricky when you are trying to deliberately go to the running back. You know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of plays in the playbook to do that specifically. But I, in general, I, I've really liked a shotgun run game. We don't have a single under center play in the playbook, which is the first time in the entire series that that's been the case. Um, but I've liked it. I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. I, I think it's a decent playbook for sure. There's a lot you can do with it. I really should be just like in the formations making these calls. Cause this is probably not the right call on third and long, but you know, here we are. I'm going to get Walker on the clear out here. Roy Morris doing things. There you go, 10 or 16? Way to get 10. I just Stuff is just not popping open at all in this game. The coverage from the DBs, even though the skill disparity is huge, there's just people are just like on us. There's nowhere to throw. So that's unfortunate. A little counter play here, Suggs. Too fast for his blocks. <laughs> Got good wiggle, 15 yards there by Suggs. That's not a bad run. 87 couldn't even get up to that linebacker or that safety to get a block, but still able to get 15. Good little run by Suggs. He's he's a bit of a smaller speedster, so it's pretty interesting. I'm looking for something that goes. I guess we'll run flood. 
Let's see if I can get this backside post. I guess it is middle field closed, so that play to Britt might not be there. We'll have to see. No, nope, Britt's not there. Oh, God, Morris stumbling in the backfield. Literally locked in an animation. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't cut up field. Couldn't throw it. He just, like, bumps into the left tackle <laughs> who runs into me. And we go down. That's that's a pretty on-brand play for the second unit. I'll say that. That play looks a lot like some backups in the game. <laughs> Just looking silly. But, all right. Well, second and 12. Already under four minutes to go in the third. So, the two clock situation has helped as we get through it with a big lead. Suggs to the second level. Good little run. He's quick through the hole, man. He, I, I don't know what it is. I, I'd have to go back and look. He feels like he feels fast, which is always fun to play with. So I'm a big fan so far of Suggs. Third and two. Still can get the first down, of course. Oh, I had I had Casey. I guess we're gonna run it with Roy. I, I was try. I literally was trying to throw it. Tight windows. They played like a little hybrid zone coverage here. And that looked like man a bunch of times, and then it didn't look like man. It was definitely zone. Roy Morris sneaks it in as the quarterback scramble today. And run game, but scramble specifically has been very, very effective. Clean looking 42 to 3 midway through the third for the boys. Hopefully, uh hopefully the new game, the logic of the new game will. I don't know, have play callers be a little bit more diverse, a little bit more, like, there's, like, nobody, there's no trick plays in NCAA 14. Like, there, I mean, there are trick plays, but there aren't from the standpoint of, like, the computer understanding situations and trying stuff, right? Like, in that first half, I, I let me take that back. There, the computer will run some fake punts, but not trick plays on, like, second and seven, right? Like, that kind of thing. What a throw that was. Oh, my goodness. We ran a zone blitz, and Palmer stands in there and rips one. It was a wobbly boy, but that thing, that thing was exactly what you were looking for. Nice pitch and catch. Catch us in a bit of uh, zone D, and he throws a good strike there. I guess I'm going to go back to man. I don't know. I don't really know what else to do to cover these guys. So, okay, man coverage it is. Oh, boy. How in the world Eric Love dropping it. We've had four, three, at least three that I can think of off the top of my head. At least three interception opportunities that have just not happened for us. And that is incredibly frustrating. This feels like a run. It's not a run. It's a pass, and it's a bad one. Palmer airmailing as he is 50% passing, 100 yards and an INT. Third down upcoming. I'm going to stay in man coverage. I'm going to run a little cover one lurk to make sure we cover off anybody trying to get something over the middle. And let's get off the field here, D. Palmer. On the run, a dart. A dart <laughs> on the run across his body for the first down. You know, and there's shit like that. Yeah, Kangwin, no flea fic flicker or wildcat. There's a little wildcat sometimes, but yes, exactly. Like, there's not like, there's, there's, there's nothing that really stands out as far as teams understanding that they're two and nine on the road in the final game of the season and they should probably try some shit in the first quarter especially down seven to three when they get the ball back right or 14 three i don't know not that they have like a legit chance but i just feel like you would see teams lay it all on the line kind of thing right that's kind of what i wish the game had a little bit more and it just doesn't so that part sucks. Eric Love on the blitz. Can we get home? We can't, but Williams kind of does. Barry hits him 
That guy, Palmer, is going to be sore tomorrow. That one's crazy. We came flying in. I'm not sure how Williams doesn't make the tackle or how the stumbling animation has that guy falling forward for yards. That guy should have, at the very least, fell sideways. I don't know what the heck that was all about, but third and one, a good drive so far for Louisville as they've been annoying as hell again. Triple option upcoming. They dive it forward. And they're going to give him the first down. My goodness, I thought we had him. I thought we had him. No, nope, they say otherwise. We've tried to mix it up. We've done all kinds of stuff today. Madden is worse for the stumbling for extra yards. It's so bad. I mean, Madden, Madden has been bad for all kinds of things, including that. And fucking Palmer's about to score a touchdown. I guess we should probably pay attention to Zach Palmer. I was actually using the defensive tackle on a QB spy, and I couldn't get there. He's fast. He, like, he's really fast. So, uh, cool. Six is dicing us. And you know, you guys know if you've watched the series long enough, scrambling quarterbacks, that's what, that's what makes me lose. Like, any time I've lost to the computer straight up, fair and square, it's been the scrambling quarterback. So, that's a thing. Cedric Smith can't get there. They pitch it, and Javon Hart going to get in from three yards out. Louisville runs the speed option. Freaking quarterback doing his thing today. He's able to get it in. It's a nine-play, 73-yard drive. Just right down our heart. My goodness. Louisville into the end zone. This is definitely one of those games. Frank was saying it earlier in the chat. Everybody, everybody in Huntington, including the players, was chilling today. And Montgomery is running in molasses for some reason. That's another thing. That's a glitch that happens sometimes. You go to sprint with a kick returner and they're like, they're jogging. They're not actually running, which is annoying. But yeah, the whole team kind of sleepwalking through the first half, not able to get off the bus. You know, oh my God, double blitz coming. I don't have time to switch this play, so we're going to stick with it, and Morris runs into eight red helmets. <laughs> okay. I mean, Louisville, come on. Come on. The double safety blitz on first and 10, down 30 points. <clears throat> hey, more power to you, I guess, huh? More power to you. All right, all right. You're going to make me put Adams back in the game and dice you up some more, I guess, huh? Is that what you want? Good throw, Morris to Britt. 14 yards as we are coming to the end of the third. Good little first down conversion there. I'll let the chew clock happen. Get us to the fourth. There's a 42-10 game in Huntington. Palmer, man, quarterback two, doing doing us dirty here so far in the third quarter. <laughs> but we got the ball back, and it would be it would feel good for the uh, the odds of getting the number one spot back if we can maybe put up 14 points here in the fourth. We'll just see. Suggs in the game, running back, counter right. Suggs falling forward. It's got eight. Definitely did not run the ball enough with Casey Smith today, which is disappointing. I think he ends up with decent yards for the day, so I'm not super worried about like the Heisman stuff. I, mean, I, think, it'll, I think it'll be fine. His body of work on the season is so dominant that I don't think it'll be a big deal. But, uh, yeah, he, I mean, he didn't have, I don't feel like he had gaping holes like this. These have been quite, quite nice to finally have. See a little... A little something, something. That has been nice. So we'll run a sweep out of shotgun, cut it up inside. Look at Suggs bouncing off tackles. Got good speed, good burst. Still a little bit of strength too. I'm feeling it with 29. I have all year. That's why I opted for him instead of Clemens in this situation because I've really liked his game. All right, middle field open. Pressure coming. Nowhere to go for Morris. He actually gets sacked as the corner comes off. We had nowhere to throw it. 
And Lou Walker's just standing there. Make a play for your quarterback, would you? 11? At least get the guy out of there. Get 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 my man out of the the like danger zone for making a play on your QB. But all right, all right, no biggie. Basically, no yard gain, or a sack for no yards, I should say. We're running a little split zone here. Suggs finding room. I don't know where he found room, but he makes it through the offensive lineman somehow. Somehow, six minutes to go in the fourth. I don't really see Britt coming open here, but if he did, nope, he did not. Pressure coming as the protection breaks down. Lou Walker popped open late. Morris gets hit, gets planted by a defensive tackle, but he's got 11. Morris has good speed, man. He, he's gotten a lot faster as the season's gone on, and he's, uh, he's pretty effective to run with, to be honest. So... I'm liking him. Can't get by one guy and plows through the entire line for 11. I know. It's it's insane, actually. A little play action here. Double blitz from the linebackers. That is a tough throw. It's on time. Ross can't get his momentum. We saw all kinds of pressure there. They sent a bunch of people. I think that was a run blitz, to be honest, from them. But Nice shot by Morris. Dissect it. Get it out of your hands quick. Don't hold on to it forever like Adams. Jesus. Nowhere to go. Got to throw it away. Just ridiculous how horrible we've been at being able to find people open today. And, like, I'm slightly gun shy, too, because obviously we threw that interception. It's like you can't just assume dudes are going to be open all the time because uh, they're not or – Dudes just backpedal straight into the line of fire and get an INT on you. Well, it's kind of a mixed bag. Suggs falling forward. Easy little uh, inside zone run. Picking up the first down. He's almost to 100 yards, which is pretty cool. I think we're going to run this in with Suggs. He's had a nice drive. We might as well use a few plays here. Choose some clock. See if we can, uh, see if we can fall forward. A little trap play. I ran into that on purpose. Take him a little more time. Suggs with the one-yard gain. Second and goal. Second and goal. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to actually run this. Strong toss out of goal line formation. This one should go to Suggs, too. Yeah, that's too easy. Too, mu too much of a convoy. I couldn't not take it. Suggs into the end zone. Touchdown for the freshman. Marshall gets another one back. 48-10. I also hope some of the animation elements are better. You know what game absolutely kills it with the animations or the presentation mode, I'd call it? MLB The Show. MLB The Show does a great job. NBA 2K does as well, but I think like the highlights, the replay packages, that stuff is really good in MLB The Show, and I, I hope that EA takes a, a book out of the show like out of their playbook to sort of figure out how to make it work because man we definitely need it we we need we need something for college football that really captures the pageantry really captures some of the crazy you know elements of today's game replay angles like a pylon cam like all of that stuff that's happened since the last time a college football game came out we need all of that you know what i mean we need all of that good play by williams and he's going to get got for a face mask, unfortunately. Face mask. We need more of that, to be honest. More randomness. I mean, obviously, it's disappointing that the TFL goes away. But how cool is it that there's a little bit, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a young player excited to make a big play in a game. And he just makes a slight mistake. That That's real. That's real. The, this game always needed more of that randomness. We try to pressure Palmer, just stands in there, throws it to the sideline. I don't know how strong his arm is, but he's been fine today. Palmer has not been their problem, to be honest. Speaking of MLB, did you see the Phillies City Connect jerseys? I did not. I saw that City Connect jerseys were coming out and being released slowly but surely, but I didn't see Phillies specifically. Um, is it nice? 
Do we like it? Because I know, in general, we've we've been shitting collectively on the Major League Baseball unis. They've not been good. So I haven't seen that one, and I'm very curious to see what it looks like. Nice play there by Simmons. It's fire? Okay, okay. I know the jersey quality has been more of the issue, not necessarily the, de the design. So hopefully we can see something as Palmer dancing around. Woo! Barry going to get sacked. Number two on the day. Palmer really should have made a decision. This is a young player. He'll learn. Good experience for him, but that is a big hit to take in a blowout scenario. And uh, a fourth and 13 upcoming. I don't expect them to do anything silly here. No. They're, they're still pretty pinned back. It is a fire jersey. I'm not a fan of baseball, and I want it. That's pretty dope, Kangwin. I'm actually very curious. I will have to look it up. Or if you have a specific photo showing it that you want me to see, I, show it to me because I'm very curious to see what it looks like. Good return here by Suggs. 35 yards deep into Louisville territory as the freshman showing that that little bit of burst. He's a good player, man. I'm a big fan of what I've seen from Suggs. I know I sound like a broken record, but just can't deny that uh, 29 is 29's an athlete. Good blocking here. Suggs on the edge again. Breaks a tackle slightly. I guess he doesn't break the tackle, but doesn't go backwards. 94 yards. The trap dummy play has worked well, too. Okay, cool. I see the link from Penn Live. I will definitely check that out. Malone from uh, Louisville injured as we're inside of two minutes, continuing to run some clock. There's Clemens in his final game inside of the Joan. He's got two carries for five. Not really interested in getting him too much more work, to be honest. We never really do any triple option work, so let's see about this play. I don't know. The overhang player makes me afraid, but let's see. That's that there. Make a good decision, Morris. Pitches it to Suggs. Cuts it inside. Bulldozes a guy. Picks up 18. Nicely done. Good job by Morris. Kind of forced the decision. Made the, made the pitch as late as he could. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Under a minute to go inside the five. If we don't score on this play, I'm definitely probably going to kneel it out. But we'll see. We'll see. Good cut back by Suggs. I think we'll run one more play. Yeah. We have to run one more play, so we might as well run one more play. Punch it in on the final play. That sounds nice. Let's just do that. Wait as long as we can to, to hike the ball. Yeah, there we go. Suggs with his second final play of the day. 55-10 as we pour it on. Senior day. Get one more at the end. They're going to let us kick it? That This would not happen in, in real life, by the way. I don't think you get to finish the possession with a kick, even though you're winning. We get a studio update to end the game. That's hilarious. Syracuse sneaks away from Boston College with a three-point win, 30-27. Lauren Gooden, 12 of 33, 220, and three scores. Johnson with 99 and a touchdown. Macklin over 100. Ostrander almost at 100. It's funny. We've we've started to learn a few of those players from these other schools. And Syracuse, man, I, I they lost a couple of games. I, I bet they would want back, but... That's a good, that's a that's an, a rising program. 185, 88 on the ground, five touchdowns for Adams. Big time stuff by three today. Has the INT that's a bit cheesy. Little, uh, little bit of the game, unfortunately, but really, really good stuff. Funny learning fictional players from other schools. It really is, Kangwin. It's so weird to play this game this long and like, see the names of guys and know that they're this player or that they wear this number and they don't exist. <laughs> it's been one of my favorite things of this genre of sports. You know, I've always been a dynasty slash franchise guy. And some of that stuff when you get so many years in is like the best. That's what made NCAA 14 so, so great for all of those years for me personally. Like, you know, the idea that 
you could fall in love with a fictional player or have a rivalry against a different fictional player like that stuff was always so dope so uh yeah big big fan big fan of that okay let's quickly look team stats 56 10 the final we put up 524 yards of total offense give up only 170 we rush for 306 scores as a team pass for 200 perfect on third downs Hold them to 30% as they, you know, held themselves to 30%. Two turnovers, including a fumble and an INT. Both teams had two turnovers. And, uh, yeah, 24 minutes of time of possession is most of it was just chew clock mode, just doing our thing. So pretty straightforward stuff. Adams goes for 185, two scores in the pick. Morris did a nice job, too, actually, real quick. Two for three for 21. He was better on the ground is what it was. Suggs leads us. 117 and two scores for Suggs in 15 carries. Adams has 88 and three scores on the ground. I didn't realize we had that many on the ground. That's impressive. Casey goes for 75. Quiet, but, you know, fine. Had a fine day. Armstrong with four catches. Chambers, 56 and a touchdown on senior day. And we'll quickly look at the defensive totals. Young leads the tackles with six. We have two TFLs from Barry and Young. Two sacks for Barry, Hooper, Jordan, Simmons, Davis, and Sowell end up getting sacks, and then Scott Ward with the lone INT. That is how the regular season wraps up for the Thundering Herd, capping off the perfect regular season and uh, setting us up for success. No injuries, nothing crazy, nothing goofy. We are ready to go for the conference championship game next week. Crazy that we are already at the end of the season six story in terms of, you know, wrapping it up. So we have an upgrade for Coach Mayo. Let me go ahead and save before I forget. And then we will uh, advance on and set the stage for next episode. I got to figure out who went, who won. Is it is it going to be Pitt? Is it going to be North Carolina? Who is it going to be? I guess I got to go two weeks because I think this first week is a bye. Um, I guess it's like, you know, it's the week that we would end up having, um, you know, army Navy, I guess technically is the game as I drop my phone up apologies. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's the only other piece is we got to figure out who exactly we will face off and I'm going to get the music going again. Perfect. Okay, news on the recruiting trail. Not good news either. Jay Will, probably my, yeah, no, definitely my favorite corner in this class. He commits to Clemson, so we lose out on the 78 overall four-star, leaving only Terrence Tyree as a target in the class. We're still in battles with the other three guys. That's disappointing. It's not necessarily surprising, but it is disappointing. And, uh, yeah, I, I would have loved to have added Jay Will. I felt like we had a really good shot for the majority of his season, uh, but it does not shake out that way. Okay, top story, still unbeaten. Wisconsin, 42-16 winners over Minnesota. Close one in Austin as SMU squeaks out over Texas, and Texas is not very good, 6-6 six and six on the year. Easy time in Happy Valley. Indiana smokes Number 24, Penn State. That's embarrassing for James Franklin's group. Losing to a pretty average Indiana team. Interesting. Cal and Oregon will play next week. Going to be an interesting matchup. Five versus 18. That's the conference championship game. Yes, yes, yes. Bridge. What does it say? Bridge and Bridges in the Fighting Illini. I thought it was just like Bridge to the Fighting Illini or something. Okay, cool. So they're just highlighting Illinois here. Alabama and Auburn will square off in the SEC title game, which is no, no, no. This is the, this was not that. This was the regular rivalry game. Oh my goodness, Kangwin. I hate to say it, Kangwin's a huge, uh, huge Auburn fan. 38-35. Looks like Auburn tried to make a comeback, but late in the fourth quarter. A 58-yard touchdown for Bama is the difference. Yes, it's called the Iron Bowl. That's right. It is 11 o'clock here as I'm recording. 8-4 um, and four Bama making a comeback. They were terrible to start the year. They were terrible last year. 
They're up to number 14 in the country. I'm not sure if they're in the SEC title game. If they are, they might have a chance to backdoor their way into the 12-team playoff, which would be very interesting. 3-9 and nine for Auburn, which is disappointing. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. We saw this. The Gators get stunned 38-35. They score two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, but the Seminoles hang on. End up, looks like shutting them down for the final five minutes of the game. Florida loses. Squanders a great opportunity, but both teams in line to make the playoff right this minute, which is very, very much interesting. And uh, Duke. Duke almost got UNC. UNC almost blew this thing. 14 points for Duke in the fourth quarter to cut it to six. And uh, unfortunately, unable to get any closer than that as three and nine Duke loses to number four North Carolina, but gave them all they could handle. So that means North Carolina will be in the ACC title game against us, which is very much exciting. And let me take a look here at the CFP standings. After week 14, Wisconsin holding on to the top spot, Marshall in it too. Pitt up to number three, North Carolina up to number four, Illinois in there at five, Cal at six, TCU at seven, Florida slides to eight after their loss, Florida State up to nine after their win. NC State in there at 10, Kansas State at 11, and Nebraska holding on to the final spot with Alabama and Army and LSU right on the doorstep. So we got to take a look at these conference championship game matchups. I think I have to advance through one more week uh, to be able to see that. But yeah, man, whoa, that's where it's going to be. And let's see here. Holy, what a change of the guard at the last minute. Andrew Adams jumps up four spots as Casey Smith tumbles down the list. I fully expected either Barry or Meyer from TCU or Pitt to, to take over. Obviously, Hunter obviously losing. He's out of the race as well, but I didn't expect Adams. I mean, I guess he put up 250 yards of total offense and five scores, but I didn't really think he had a chance anymore after falling down the list. But Andrew Adams, redshirt freshman back in the driver's seat. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Okay, scores and schedules. Let's see who's playing this week. I think it's just... That's a lot of games this week, isn't it? I thought it's usually just like Army-Navy. I don't know what these games are. Pac-12, I guess there's another week of conference games just in general. Yeah, because there's multiple Conference USA games, multiple Pac-12 games. American Conference. Okay, well, we'll advance forward and just see what's up. See if we can get to the Conference Championship Week. Obviously, we know it's going to be us and North Carolina. Before we do that, Coach Skill Tree, Coach Mayo has an upgrade. We could add some into the recruiting. There's a pipeline boost and there's a locksmith, but I think we need some more on the field stuff. So we've been chipping away at this, and I think we need a little bit more. I would love to unlock this next freaking row but fortunately we can't yet so i guess setup artist level two is what we need to do that's what we will do i don't really care about antifreeze i i don't i think i've had one kick the entire series maybe two that have been <laughs> under the scrutiny of the antifreeze stuff so i'm not really worried let's take a look five scholarships left where are we in the uh, top classes we're still in the top spot despite having a couple less than ole miss which is really impressive for them. 22 players in the class. We're still chilling at 20. Georgia Tech in the top six. Good for them. That's quite a result. Here's the board. Jerome Young. We still are in the lead for him. Let's see. Did we move at all last week? Yes. We got a slightly bigger lead than Pitt or on Pitt. We got a slightly bigger lead on Ohio State for Benjamin Pope. So those two battles are trending in the right direction. We are in big trouble now after a visit in week 14 to USC for Gilliam, which is unfortunate. We are still in great shape, almost up 6,000 points for Terrence Tyree, who is our Jason Williams replacement, and we are getting closer and closer on Burrell, the punter. So there's our five targets. Those are our five scholarships. That's kind of all we got left. Here's what we miss out on on, uh, on Jason Williams. 
Number six corner in the country, four-star player, 78 overall with 95 speed, 80 coverage, 89 zone. So a speedy zone coverage corner is what he was at 5'11", 190. So we will be taking him off of the list, and we are going to just quickly look here at Terrence Tyree. 76 overall, so slightly worse, not as fast, but more balanced, 85 man, 85 zone. So a very much a balanced skill set, uh, 82 play rec, 69 tackle. So he's he's a priority for us. He's he's the guy in this class, uh, and it would be great to get this wrapped up if he would just commit already. And great size, 6'1", 193. So absolutely love to see that. That's the recruiting update. Looking good. Let's go ahead and fast forward to next week, conference championship week. We'll see the official matchup against UNC. We'll see if there's any upsets, any craziness from the week 15 slate. I didn't see Army Navy listed, and I guess, I don't know, I guess we moved them around. They were independents, and now they're in conferences, so maybe they messed, maybe the game messed with their matchup. I mean, Army Navy is awesome on the final, final week of, of football, but, you know, here we are. So, all right, first big domino falls jerome young pope and gilliam were still in battles those will go into the offseason and we come back we get our corner the corner we needed terrence tyree in the class really really nice find and there it is officially we are taking on north carolina in the conference championship for the acc title let's quickly just look one more time at tyree since he's in looking good feeling good about ty tyree absolutely loving it literally a decent tackler the only thing he's lacking i think is a little bit of ex like suddenness only 84 acceleration 82 agility so he's like not like the greatest athlete in the world but he can come up and tackle he's listed as a hard hitter three-star prospect absolutely that's a good find that is a good find and uh he could be a really good cornerback too somewhere down the line so nice good to add those four guys uh, here at the top are the final four scholarship options. Those those battles are going to carry over to the offseason. So that's it for recruiting until the offseason episode. That's where we uh, that's where we are. Um, and then let's look here at the rankings. Probably not too much movement. Yeah, not a lot happened. These guys all stay the same inside the top five. Cal wins close at Oregon. Hanging on to their sixth spot. Florida State. There's a little bit of shuffling here between Kansas State and Florida State. But it would be Nebraska in uh, before conference championship week. Alabama would be out. Army would be out. So here we go. Let's take a look from this perspective. We've got LSU at 15 taking on number eight, Florida. They could theoretically slide up to the top 12 with a win against Florida. Kansas State and TCU square off. I think loser goes home. Mm, TCU with two losses might still be in. If Kansas State loses, I think they go home. They would be outside. Florida, LSU, like we just talked about. And then you got Wisconsin taking on Illinois. So one versus five. Two versus four, which is very exciting. So the top five, top six teams all in action, I guess, technically. Except for Pitt. So that's going to be where it's at. So pretty epic way to end the season next week. Double check the Heisman watch. Adams at the top. Smith sitting there at number four. Should get an invite to New York. And here we are. North Carolina and Marshall in the ACC title game. Saturday night, 730. Akron in Eastern Michigan for the MAC. Kansas State TCU for the Big 12. Arkansas State at Georgia Southern for the Sun Belt. Shout out my former conference, the Sun Belt. LSU and Florida for the SEC title. Fresno State and Army, a very good Army team who could have a chance to get into the playoff at, in the Mountain West. And Illinois, Wisconsin, number one Wisconsin for the Big 10. That is where... It all stacks up. Oh, man, I'm fired up. I'm genuinely excited. Next week, it's the Tar Heels. Rematch of multiple conference uh, championship games and um, 
at the very least, multiple uh, multiple college football playoff games. We've we've had the Tar Heels multiple times uh, in the Mac Brown era, especially. Both teams are B pluses overall. Looks like their passing offense is a little bit trailing behind their rush offense, similar to us. And it looks like their pass defense is worse than their rush defense, similar to us. Both teams have turned people over at a high rate. Have a very good turnover differential, both inside the top six, both five and six, respectively. Pretty crazy. Here's how we handled our schedule. Off-site against Texas A&M, got the win. They ended up six and six on the year. We faced Michigan. That was a ranked game. They stunk Barely got over 500 at 7-5. and five. Florida State, who ended up being not ranked when we played them, is much better than we thought. They finished the year 9-3 and three with a chance to make the playoff. Miami finishes 4-8. and eight. Even though that was a ranked matchup, they weren't very good. I didn't expect Boston College to finish the season 500. So that was a decent win. Clemson cl- crawls back to 5-7. and seven. They scratch and claw, end up making it work. Eight and four, Syracuse. We got a big win against them, holding them to single digits. West Virginia, two and ten. They were terrible. We boat raced them. Notre Dame ranked, finishes eight and four, unranked. We got that win. North Carolina State going to be a playoff team again, so that's good to see. We got a good win against them. We clean up Wake and Louisville like we were supposed to, and now it's North Carolina in the conference title. North Carolina. Beat up on a bad Nevada and Mizzou team. They win it against BYU and a bad Clemson team. They get a good road win at Pitt. They beat a good Georgia Tech team who finished 8-4. and four. They lose to our only real mutual opponent. That was wor- worth noting. They lose at NC State by three points, and that is the only thing separating this from being a 1-2 game. That's crazy. That is crazy. And they've had a couple blowouts. Actually, no. They almost lost to Virginia. I forgot about that. 35-34. And then they've played two bad teams in Miami and Duke really close. So, I don't know where they're trending. Maybe they're, maybe they've been sleepwalking. Maybe they're just now hitting their stride. We will have to see. But we will dive into all things that game next time. As I'll save, uh, save where we are in the dynasty now that we've advanced forward. And that's going to wrap up the episode, man. That is some fun stuff. I appreciate you guys rocking with me and hanging out for for this one today. Very, very cool. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are enjoying your spring. Um, Happy regular season finale in season six. We are on to the postseason now. We are are on to the postseason, which is going to be insane. So, I'm really looking forward to it. Let me see, Kangwin, as we wrap up, if I can get to Google Chrome and take a look at uh, at these links you sent, because I do want to see them. Perfect. I sure can. So let me show you guys real quick. Kangwin was talking about the jerseys for the Philly editions, and that is a fire-ass jersey. I'm not sure about the colors. Is that like... I don't. I guess maybe Philadelphia doesn't have any team with a specific set of colors, so that I guess it could be anything. I don't know if those colors like mean anything to the city, but Bryce re- repping that uni that looks clean. That looks really clean. So hopefully the quality of the jerseys from Fanatics is better. That would be nice to see. But all right, y'all. I appreciate you. Thanks for tu- for tuning in, checking out the stream today. Season six postseason up next. That's what we've got on the deck. I appreciate y'all. Take care of yourselves. All right.